Okay, so let's move on to our second type of microphone. And the second microphone that we want to talk about is the ribbon microphone. The ribbon! And I've got one of these here as well. The ribbon microphone works really similarly to the dynamic microphone. They both function on a principle called magnetic induction. The difference with the ribbon microphone is that the ribbon mic is going to have, instead of a tightly wound coil of metal suspended between the poles of the magnet, it's going to have a very thin ribbon of metallic film between those poles. And let's go to PowerPoint and check that out. So now you have a magnet, but instead of that coil of metal, we've got this ribbon and it's so thin and it's very sensitive. We talked about the ribbon microphone in our last video, that the ribbon microphone was one of the reasons the quality of our recordings changed. And when the quality of our recordings changed, the type of singers that we recorded changed because the ribbon was able to capture those subtle fluctuations that the microphones of the day could not. So we can say the ribbon mic and the dynamic microphone both function on the same principle, and we call that principle magnetic induction. It means there is a magnet and something moving between the poles of that magnet, and that's where the transducing happens. That's how we get the sound wave into electricity. Here are some characteristics of ribbon microphones compared to dynamics. Well, first of all, they are more fragile. I said that the SM57 was nearly indestructible, and it feels that way most of the time. Uh, ribbon microphones are also more expensive. Usually, I said the SM57 costs $100, always has, always will. If you're looking at this particular ribbon microphone, this is manufactured by a company called Royer, and its model number is R121. Again, you don't have to remember that right now, but I'll tell you for your personal benefit. This microphone costs closer to $1,000. So we've got a factor of 10 in there. They are more expensive. They're also more sensitive, meaning they will respond to a subtler fluctuation in the air pressure, right? And apart from being more expensive, they also have a lower output, which means they're not great for very, very quiet sources. Unfortunately, they also are fragile enough that they will distort in the presence of really loud sources. So now you have this Goldilocks sort of microphone. It's not good on things that are too soft. It's not good on things that are too loud. You gotta find those things that are just right. But when you find them, oh, it's a beautiful microphone. So what are some of the things I like using a ribbon for? I love using ribbon mics on electric guitars, but the electric guitar, as you know, can be a rather loud source, right? So if I'm using a ribbon microphone, I have to make sure I put enough distance between the microphone and the source so that the sound pressure level does not distort or worse, damage that ribbon that is suspended in there. Okay. So, let's go to our third and final type of microphone. The third type of microphone that we're going to discuss is called a condenser or capacitor microphone. Now, I say both because truly, if we're talking about the function of the mic, capacitor is the more correct title. However, most people sort of use this shorthand of condenser when they are discussing this mic. Let me explain why one is, is truer than the other. Those of you who have been through studio maintenance or who know a little something about electronic components understand what a capacitor is. It is two plates, and those plates are situated parallel to one another, and between them they can store a charge. Two plates, 
that store a charge of electricity between them. Well, if you were to open up this capacitor microphone, what you would find is two plates. And those plates are parallel to one another. And between them, they store a charge. And one of those plates moves. And this is where the magic happens. Because when you have a moving plate that fluctuates, it's acting as what? It's acting as the diaphragm. And so if I whistle 1K, that diaphragm is moving back and forth 1,000 times every second. And every time it pushes against the back plate, the charge that is stored between the two rises. And every time it pulls away from the back plate, the charge that is stored between the two dips. And so the output is that alternating current of electricity. And that's what makes everything happen. That's what makes the magic work, right? That's the secret sauce to this whole thing. Hey, everybody, it's Scott Velasco interrupting myself from the News Journal Center this time. I wanted to say, first of all, ew. The phrase secret sauce really grossed me out while I was watching back through that. But the second thing is, I feel this is a good spot to end this part of the video, and I want you to tune in to our next video where I tackle the question, why should you choose to use one microphone instead of another? All right, I look forward to seeing you then. Right now, it's time to bounce. Scott Velasco fading out. It came to the door. It was a Tuesday afternoon.